In this video, I'm going to show you how you can work out the line of best fit to some data in Excel, and in particular how you can estimate the uncertainty in this gradient and the intercept of this line. Okay, so we have some data with uncertainties and error bars plotted. Now Excel has a built-in way to work out the best fit line. To get this, select the cell, select chart design, add chart element and pick trend line. We'll do a linear trend line. There you go, that's the best fit. Now that's all very nice and very easy but it's got a few major flaws. First of all, when computing the best fit, it doesn't allow for the fact that the error bars might differ from one place to another. If you want to do that, you'll have to write your own program in a different programming language, which is something we'll teach about later. Also, it doesn't give you an uncertainty in the values. We can see what the values are if we click on the trend line and then format trend line here with a right click. We can get it to display equation on chart. Move that somewhere we can see it. And we can see it thinks that it's a 2.3178x plus 0.8748. So the gradient is 2.3178 and the intercept is 0.8748. So that's Excel's best guess and it seems a reasonable guess, but what's the uncertainty in it? Now we're just going to estimate this. The way we're going to estimate it is we're going to come up with a model straight line that fits the data and we're going to adjust the parameters of the model and wiggle the model around, wiggle the line around and see how much we can actually wiggle the gradient before it starts looking ridiculous. So let's insert a new column here for our model. So we go up here, right click and uh, let's insert. I'll call it model. And we're going to need our model to have a gradient and an intercept. And we can put these anywhere else in the cell. Let's have the gradient. And oh, the gradient is going to be about 2. Very rough guess to begin with. And intercept. And that's going to be about 1. We're going to adjust those values later. We're just going to see what we get with this and play around with it till we get a better fit. Okay, so now we need to put in here our model with the equal sign. It's going to be the gradient times the x-axis time plus the intercept. Now in principle we could type that equation in everywhere, but it's going to be much easier if we just drag it down. But that has a problem. If we drag it down, it's not behaving like we expect. The reason is, let's take, we take a cell down here, that's equal to the time times not the gradient, it's it's going to be these two cells over here, not these two cells over there. As you drag something down, it will always pick things in the same relative position. So from there, it's going to pick the cell 2 to the left to be x, and the 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right to be the gradient, and 4 to the right and down 1 to be the intercept, which is not what we want. The way you overrule that in Excel is you get the equation here and anything you don't want to change as you drag it down, you put dollar signs in front of it. So H instead of having H2, you put dollar $H, dollar $2. And instead of H3, so it's these cells, you put dollar $H, dollar $3. And that means it stays fixed. As you drag it down, it won't move relative. Okay, that won't change this. But now when we drag down it's behaving much better. And if we indeed click on one of the cells down here, we can see it's using this for its value of x, but it's got the correct gradient and intercept. OK, now we need to add our model to the graph. So click on the graph and right click Select Data. Now previously we just had these two columns, now we're going to have three columns worth of data. And you can see it's added our model as a bunch of orange points. That's probably not what we want. We want, normally want our model to be a line. So if we just select the data points and go down, right click Format Data Series, click on the paintbrush, we want a solid line. We can pick a color. Red looks fine to me. And we don't want markers, so we can go to None for Markers.
Okay, so now we have our data and our model. And what we can do is we can play with the gradient here and the intercept and see which models are acceptable. Now to me this red line it's way outside the error bars at the top so that gradient is too low. So let's try increasing the gradient. How about 2.1? Uh, that's getting good. It's getting through most of the error bars. Maybe a little bit higher still to be plausible. So 2.2. .2. Okay, now 2.2 .2 looks pretty good. Um, 2.15. Yeah, that's going through, misses a few of the error bars, but goes through most, and that's probably plausible. So probably the lowest plausible gradient is about 2.15. How about the highest plausible gradient? How about 2.4? Now the whole thing's a bit high, so I might need to reduce the intercept to say 0.95. It's probably still a bit high, how about 0.9? Oh, that looks good. I mean that's that's fine, it's going through most of the data points. How about 2.5? That still looks fine. 2.6. It's a bit high, might bring the intercept down a bit, 0.8 say, or even a bit lower, 0.7. Well, hopefully you get the idea. What you do is you play around with these things. Well, that looks okay. How about 2.8? Bring the intercept down a bit. That's uh, okay, but it's starting to get a bit hairy. It's starting to miss some of the error bars at the top and the bottom. Um, so it looks like, roughly speaking, our range of plausible gradients is between about 2.2 .2 and 2.8. So something in the middle of that, say 2.5 that'd be 2.5 is in the middle of that. So it probably means that our best value is about 2.5 with an uncertainty of about 0.3. So what you basically do is you play around with these two values and see how much of a range you can get where it still goes through the majority of the error bars and doesn't look totally silly. And this is a subjective process. There are more formal ways to do it, but this gives you a good idea of just how much the gradient could be different from your best fit value and still not totally stupid.